Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, I'm a little bit worried <clears throat> what happened. I'm a little bit worried about the Lee Chess site. Get it back up, all right? What are you doing? That's kind of rude, Panda. He's, he's really getting more and more primitive all the time. It just constantly says it's reconnecting on LeechS, but it's not actually crashing. Um, so I don't know, you know, that that's a bug in and of itself or what the deal is. Because normally when LeechS like just crashes, it crashes, you get that, the screen where there's like the robot playing against the little girl on, on the chair, sitting on a chair or whatever. Um, the robot screen hasn't come up, you know, so it's almost like it's, it's, it's still working, but you keep getting this like kind of reconnecting. Let's see if we can play a game. What happens? We're tournament now. Let's try casual. I don't want it to crash in the middle of a rated game. I already lost all my. I click on the red reconnecting and it comes back. It just keeps coming back and it keeps going to, to reconnecting. I don't know. That's never happened, you know, for me. As I said, it might be a bug in and of itself, but um, I'm seeing no games in the lobby here. That's a problem. If I click on a pool, a pool game, these are all rated custom. Hmm. Casual. Just try a casual standard five zero. I have the feeling um, this is not going to happen. Yeah, it, Lee Chess seems to be screwed. There's something seriously wrong at Lee Chess. <clears throat> hmm. I wonder if I can even make a move in like one of my correspondence games. Let's try that. This very promising end game against Alms. I was thinking to play this. And then Rook A6. So I could make a move in this, it's interesting, I could make a move in my correspondence game. But I'm not sure it actually, yeah, maybe it didn't actually go through. Hmm. But it's off my list now, or is it? No, it didn't. It didn't go through. It looks like it's down. Let's try something else. Can we do a puzzle? Kind of looking like a rook sacrifice on f6. But how does that work? Oh, of course, like rook takes and queen h6, I assume. There's no way to protect f6, so it's pretty much like forced mate. It's not even letting me make the move. That's a problem. Oh no. What are we gonna do? We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to play on another chess site. Play 15 minute games on ICC or something. That's what I usually do when I'm, when I'm really jonesing. Let me see if I can, can do that. Hmm. Don't want to promote the ICC, but it's better than chess.com. All right. Let's see. Where's our board? Let me let me see if I can do this. Play something anyway. James Clark. Asterbate is here. Mule Skinner. Lee Chess is down. Ludwig. What's up, guys? I don't know. I won't play on chess.com. Clash Kid, Lee Chess has crashed. Crash Kid. Let's try to play a game on, on the Internet Chess Club, I guess, for lack of a better plan. Um, let's see. Where's my board? Being stupid. All right, let's see if I can make this work. 
with the window. Hmm. That's not going to fit, right? Let's resize my board. Just bear with me, guys. We can try to play. Mm. Damn it. Cooperate with me. Can't resize everything properly. This board is not good. Board. Board. There you go. Board. All right, board. You can fit there. Just a temporary solution while Lee Chess is down. Good old Blitzen. Yeah, I never play here anymore, but for lack of better idea, I won't play on chess.com. I refuse. All right. Let's lock that in place. See if we can get a game. Let me move it one more time. There. Temporary fix. Maybe play Blitzer. Um, Blitzer. Let's see, window. You guys actually see that window? Okay. Um, right. Lee Chess is okay now? Are you serious? Are you sure? Are you sure? Don't fake me out. It didn't look okay. Let's try it again. It's okay now. I've got a challenge. All right. It was all a false alarm. Now I have to fix my window again. That's cool though. All right. Properties. Better it, it fixes itself now before it's too late. Done. Now I got to move the board again. Hmm. I got a board. Welcome guys. It's supposed to be weird Wednesday. Actually, see how this works. Aster Bates challenged me to 7 plus 3. Weird Wednesday. All right. BHS is back. Thanks to God. All right, Astrobate, bring on the, the the E4 defense. You can actually see the clocks. Moving the board was, was a little better. I think my clock was being obscured by by Panda. But I'd still like to make this like to make this a tiny bit bigger if I can. Without obscuring the clock. That looks good. Relatively good for now. All right, guys. Welcome, everybody. Clash Kid, Ludwig, Acerbate, Triumphant. I abandoned the puzzle. Puzzle we'll, we'll, we'll do later. E4, B6. All right. Acerbate, what do you got for me? The latest latest Owen defense theory some people say Owen's defense I don't know is it supposed to be Owen or Owen apostrophe s 
Does anyone know definitively? Or does it matter? This opening is just not common enough to deserve to say the name correctly. Christian Bauer. But triumphant, the puz puzzle. It was rook takes f6 and queen h6. So I knew the solution correctly. It was pretty easy. I just wasn't allowed to move, make a move. I guess when I go back to puzzles, <clears throat> um, it'll it'll pop back up as my as I have to do that puzzle before I can go on to the next one. Trumpet, I thought you were pretty strong. You should be able to visualize that. You're not going to see every piece in your head, but the general idea you should have you should be able to visualize. All right, now Asterby's been doing some knight f6 type of stuff. I mean, you might be able to do it there, but yeah, actually, I guess it's fine. Maybe in fact, knight f6 is the best move here. Knight f6, knight d2, knight f6, queen e2, knight c6, c3, e5. I've played that before. Weird Wednesday. <clears throat> I guess I should play something weird. I consider the Owen defense weird enough that that's kind of an unusual opening. But I guess maybe I should do something myself to technically keep us in the theme of Weird Wednesday. Um, that's my theme for Wednesdays for the most part. We could do like an occasional simul, um, maybe moving forward on a Wednesday to kind of mix it up. Maybe next Wednesday. We'll see how my life is at that point. Preemptive C3. Should I just develop my pieces here? This is this is Astabate's like passive half hippo, <coughs> but I I don't know. I really feel like you you need. I feel like you need to play c5 to get enough, almost enough pressure against the center. It seems like without c5, black's position is inherently too passive. I mean, it's already, it's anyway, it's too passive, even with c5, but it's not a great opening, I think, the Owen defense, or Owen apostrophe S, Owens. <clears throat> Have I ever played with noise-canceling earbuds to improve concentration? I never owned noise-canceling earbuds, but I, you know, do sleep with, like, earplugs sometimes. Um, so... Probably, I mean, I've actually played tournament games with ear earplugs, whatever you want to call it. Nothing as ergonomically cool as as um, noise canceling earbuds, trademark. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's that's a good idea. I don't see any real downsides except like you might not hear your opponent off for a draw if it was an over the board game. <clears throat> Of course it's allowed, but I mean, you know, as long as, I don't know what you mean by that, but if it's like attached to a, you know, to a, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Nowadays technology, people will get suspicious. They're like wireless receivers or something. It's a good point, Clash Kid, actually. I mean, I haven't been playing that much over the board chess in the last like five years since there's more and more technology available. I mean, I never had anybody like question if I had, I, I probably pay, played like 20, maybe 10 or 15, 20 tournament games with the earplugs. I don't think my opponents ever even noticed. It used to be a very common thing for some players who would constantly have earplugs. Um, I remember this German, I am George Blauert, who used to have earplugs. A, a lot of players I've played had earplugs. It was fairly common. Um, I mean, I guess they could ask the arbiter to make sure they were just normal earplugs you know 
not like receivers for for sound but I don't think there's anything in the rules against it but I guess they have wireless you know stuff like that all right Astabate. should I ignore this on the queen side or what probably I just should have played e5 last move I have a hard time sleeping if there's a lot of noise. Used to drive me crazy like English football fans on the main street in Budapest in the middle of the night, like chanting and stuff. Fortunately, I moved from that place a few years ago. So I mean, it's much more quiet where I live now, but there's still a lot of noises like ambulances. <clears throat> um, some people can just sleep in any kind of conditions. I can't do that. Has to be lost the e6 square. It's goodbye. Nice knowing you, Astabate. Critical weakness. Basically, you turn into a Dutch when you played f5, and e6 is oftentimes it's a it's a bad classical Dutch now, where e6 just falls. How to cook ginger? Um, you don't just like slice off pieces of it and put it in with your stir fry noodles or something troll I don't know man now I don't need a g5 my knight's stronger than your rook I had this debate with spectacular camel yesterday the value of a extremely strong minor piece versus Versus a useless rook, you know, it's almost a pity to like take that rook with such a strong knight Wouldn't you agree? Kids Anything slightly resembling a fishing pole it's good for ass bait This might pinch a little. So don't see the mate. <clears throat> Maybe there is no mate. It's gonna be taking a walk. To Velvet Underground. And that's actually, yeah, Lou Reed, a walk on the wild side. Queen takes h7 check. Oh no, I thought I had bishop g6, but I'm crazy. So, wow, there's no mate. So disappointing. This is probably like the worst continuation for me. No mate at all. But we get asked to be in a tentacle ending. His favorite kind of position. <coughs> Trade down. The knight is strong. F4 would slightly weaken my king side, so I'm not even going to do that. I'd rather just eliminate that, that piece. Even bishop f3 is a good move here. Two bishops raking the king side. Yes, now we can play this. Check. Come out for some fresh air. There you go. <clears throat> Have a little fresh air. Acerbate. Bishop's hanging. <clears throat> All right, dude. All right. 
You're done now. It's getting away. No. Get back in the box. Can I never have a mate? Yeah, there is an increment here. Don't forget. He's trying for self-mate, but I'm just too incompetent to, to mate him. I still have the 2507 rap rating. I lost 250 blitz points yesterday. It got worse because right before my stream, I like signed up for a blitz tournament and that's me. And I actually um, forfeited when I left the screen for a minute, stupidly. All right, Mule Skinner, Ludwig AC. So 7 plus 5, 3 through 7 plus 3, casual. Troll, you made some controversial comment. Um, all right, guys. Well, at least I don't want to jinx myself, but my cough is, is not worse than yesterday. That's good. E4. Um, all right, Mule Skinner. The usual. I'll have the usual. Menu. Knight C3. All right. So what happened the last time we did this against him? I've also got E6, you know. I don't know these lines really well. This is highly recommended against the Grand Prix attack. What happens if I play A6, for example? What are you going to do, D4? You're going to play an open Sicilian here? He would have to revert to G3, G3 or D3. I can guarantee like Stockfish is recommending D5 right now. But this is not my comfort zone. This type of structure where I'm playing basically <clears throat> a French type of structure in a closed type of position. Um, but a good one, like e5, knight, h6. We've had a few games with Mule Skinner, probably along these lines. But I never played the, the Sicilian, so I could play a French type of structure. Although I did originally, um, in my first 10 years or so of chess, I did like to play primarily e6 on move two. So I have that to fall back on at times. Presumably knight h6, knight f5. I don't think that a4, a6 benefits white in any way. It probably weakens his position more than mine. There's no such thing as the old Benoni triumphant. All right, G3. There's King's Indian, Old Indian, Benoni, but there's there doesn't exist. This is this is fake news. The old Benoni doesn't exist. I guess you just call it the Benoni, you know. I don't know. It doesn't really have a name at that point, you know. If you if you play e6 on the second move, I think um, it becomes a Franco Benoni. So it's just a Benoni, like in its primordial form, and and then you you figure out what kind of Benoni it is, like later on. Okay, yeah. No, I like d4 c5. I'm not arguing with you. Like maybe there is somebody somewhere who wrote some book and called it the old Benoni, but. But I'm very, I'm a stickler for, for classical 
you know, naming of the openings. I just, I want to know that that was called that by someone real, not some book published in 2015. Um, a lot of people make that claim about like, um, there's a setup to black and play in the Benoni. Like you try to do a modern Benoni, but you don't put the bishop on G6. You put the bishop on E7. And uh, yeah, we're supposed to play a weird opening today. I mean, this this game. I played the Sicilian, forgot. But this is weird enough. This is pretty weird for me. I don't play this normally. Um, So when you say old Benoni, my first thought was you're talking about doing like bishop e7 in the modern Bodoni instead of g6 and bishop g7. Yeah, I like d4, c5. It's a good opening. At least in practical terms. Yeah, I'll try to play that. I think you might argue, I have a good friend who plays it often. Um, I think you might argue that that's like black's most aggressive move against d4. Either d4, c5, or d4, f5, the Dutch. Well, I mean, actually, I was <laughs> debating this philosophically, like, yesterday. Um, what about, like, d4, e5? If we really want to have a philosophical argument about what the most aggressive move one can play against d4 is, <clears throat> I guess e5. <coughs> Well, triumphant, um, you know, it doesn't have to be that close, dude. It's up to you. You know, you can play d4, c5, d5, e5, and lock it like a like a check Benoni. Or you can play e6 and try to open it up yourself. It's not necessarily that easy for white to keep it completely locked. My, my gut instinct here is that the a-file doesn't play that much for white. Space is more important. But Mule Skinner's position is pretty standard, close Sicilian. I get positions like this a lot when I play the English with white. There are some setups that black plays with, with f5 against the English, f5 and e4. I mean, these pawns are a little bit overextended, but at the same time, it's hard to break it up. Interesting to think about h5, releasing the floodgates, opening up the floodgates. Well, I mean, what I'm talking about, triumphant, <laughs> it, it well, largely depends on how white reacts, of course. You know, white can play c4 or e4 or both. Um, and that, that largely determines what kind of game it's going to be. But the problem is if you try to open it up, there's a chance you're going to transpose to a modern Benoni, you know, and, and that's very open. I mean, that's something that could easily happen. Ponda's, Ponda's happy. He loves h5. Actually, h4. Technically, he's the h4 Ponda. But, um, he'll take h5. Oh. Uh, Honestly, I'm really neutral about, well, you know, white or black. Uh, I can I can play both colors. <laughs> That's pretty funny, man. Pretty funny. He's down with both colors. Says the panda. The panda says. Hmm. Now what do we do? We just kind of hang out. Mildly concerned about the future of my king. I'm not sure about bishop d7 at all. Do you guys also have to resize the board when you log on to Lee Chess? I have this since a couple of weeks. It's annoying. Um, No, typically it's like where I left it. But it probably depends on like what kind of browser you're using and stuff, Clash Kid. 
Do you have Windows or do you use some sort of other operating system? Like Mac? I mean, Apple, whatever you want to call Mac. <laughs> I'm from the 80s. Um, Rook A2. All right, dude. Whatever you say. You got me. You got me. I'm coming out with my hands up. Check out Mule Skinner. Making me feel bad for playing... I feel like I should just play bishop bishop c8. Screw it. All right, I, I admit I made a mistake, okay? Maybe I shouldn't, though. Better to just retreat my queen. I can play bishop c8 any time. Actually, where should I retreat my queen? b7 or c7? I mean, b7 seems weird. This is debatable you know, about putting my bishop on, on d7 because of this, but I think there's something kind of artificial about his a-file play. Maybe not. You're playing on my side of the board, dude. This is my side of the board. That's the queen side where I'm supposed to have more space. The thing about Mule Skinner's play that I learned two years ago whenever he started watching was that he seems to be very um, conversant in closed positions, you know, to the point where he's like almost tries to force it every single game. And I, I experienced an interesting kind of revelation, let's say, when I first started streaming connection um that i feel uncomfortable playing closed positions in blitz something i never really concretely thought about uh-oh where's acerbate i feel like i've been suckered into this Not all proverbial hell is about to break loose. How do we do this? King safety first. I have a bad feeling about this, man. Knight g3 check is possible as well. <sighs> I feel like he's a genius and he tricked me. Yeah, the king x-ray I noticed right away. If I take with the e-pawn, I'm concerned that becomes a, a greater factor. Man, Neil Skinner is an annoying opponent to face. I think he likes his position. He likes playing like this, where the whole board is like convolutedly locked. I think he like intentionally did this. Can't tell if white is better. Infinite flash chess is here. I can't tell if white is better or not either, but I'm going to do this because I've had enough of this knight on d4 thing, you know. I, I didn't really really like that possibility too much. Now it's just a convoluted French. Which has pretty much been like the whole game. That's what this game was by definition, right? Rook g2. He's got the queen. Queen of many... Queen of many colors. I think he likes knights better than bishops. You're not right in the head, man. It's not right to like knights better than bishops. What are you going to do? Triple on the G file now?
I'm going to help him triple on the G file. I guess he can play rook g7, but I don't know, his follow-up after that is pretty vague. I told you it was my side of the board, but you didn't believe me. See, okay. Knight takes f7, king takes f7, rook g7, check. Maybe h4, h5, h6, h7, h8. <laughs> oh no. This is all about this, this cheap shot here. Can't believe it, I got mated. I'm a good player. Wow. <laughs> totally missed knight h7. Damn. That's going to go in the blunder file. Oh my god. Greatest blunders I ever made. Completely missed it. That's really blind. He missed another strong move? What? I don't understand. Why is he giving him like plus 2.6 here? It just likes h4. But then it changes its mind. Okay. I wouldn't call his opening passive, dude. You know, you think this is passive? Passive is like when you play the London system with c3 and h3 and bishop h2 and rook e1 and stuff like that. I mean, this guy like pushed all of his pawns across the board. I don't think that's passive. You know, that's that's not my definition of passive. Um, this this is this is like you know, um, definitely not passive, but it's a really bad oversight to not see knight h7 check man that's embarrassing all right what happens president donald duck five plus five <clears throat> didn't see knight h7 this it's ridiculous i calculated knight f7 like six moves deep but whoops all right. I guess this is triumphant. Hard to play, you know, the, the D4 C5 opening here. But I'm supposed to play weird openings, and again, I forgot. So let's try something different here. Um, all right. I never play this, but let's try it. D4. I'm a little bit flustered from the last game. There's a chance F4, E6, G4. Yeah. I never play this move. D4. I don't even know the theory. If there is theory. This is my attempt at weird openings. It's not really a weird opening, but it's weird to me because I don't know it at all. Um, I never studied D4, so let's try it. 
Let's just sack a pawn. Gambit style. Now, did we transpose to anything? If I play gambits, I won't lose. There's another president watching president. Oh, that is president. His name's cut off. All right. That was a different player. So you don't want this pawn? All right. <clears throat> Doesn't want the pawn. Then we transpose some kind of boring Steinitz defense now. You can also take with the queen, of course. Maybe it's better to take with the queen, actually. I think you can take that pawn. It's not that ridiculous. Maybe it's even the best move. Knight e4. What do I do? <coughs> Maybe not. Knight e4, rook e1, d5. That's got to be theory. Knight e4, rook e1, d5, knight c3, for example. It's almost like a... What's it called? Um... Milner, not Milner, Barry. Um, can't remember the name of it now. No, 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 I, I'm serious. I think that knight c4 is a good move. It's a very principled move. No, we're not trying to mess with you. I, th I mean, I mean it. I think that's actually a good move. Nice game by Mule Skinner. Not a bad game. Catastrophic blunder by me. <laughs> Queen A1. Queen G1? Like, that sound for white. Unbelievable. How can you play like that? My God, man. His score against me with this Grand Prix attack is ridiculous. He probably has close to a plus score. I don't even want to play the Sicilian anymore. It's so annoying to play against that. Not really threatening, but just like annoying. Like the opening's not fun anymore. To have to play this ridiculous closed position every time. I'm just going to play the Scandinavian against him from, from now on, like every single game. I think. Whenever I play Mule Skinner, I'm just going to play e4, d5, and no other move. That's it. For the rest of your life, I'm only going to play like one d5 against you. Because it's, it's gotten to the point where it's it's just out of control, annoying. Um, hmm. Surprised me. I really thought you were going to take with the, the pawn there. I think you probably should take with the pawn. Because the only justification for your... Slightly worse position is the fact that you have the bishop pair. When you give up the bishop pair here, I would think you would... You would now just have an inferior structure with really no compensation for it. Not like black is lost or something, but... He loses his justification. This is a new account? Strange. We've never played. But you were in my stream before. <laughs> Ask be careful with the gift subs, okay? But that's cool. He gifted a sub to Triumphant. Um. Don't do any, like, Bob gift subs to trolls and stuff. 
Please don't give out the gift subs to the trolls. Like, I'm serious. Don't do that. I'm like the only streamer who's not happy for a gift sub. <clears throat> Maybe once I get a moderator back in the chat, you can do gift subs to trolls too. But um, for now, <laughs> we'll omit that. I told you that my friend made it himself on purpose in a game because he's crazy. He was depressed and crazy and he played, he must have played F4, F4, E5, G4 and made it himself in two moves in a GM tournament. You'll let me win now? Don't need to let me win, man. I mean, people beat me on their own free will all the time. <laughs> like, I don't, you know. I don't think what I just said made sense, but it sounded all right. No. Um, yeah, you do need to let me win. I take it back. I've been kind of messed up. Because I haven't been playing enough. I have a master of excuses. I mean, I have all sorts of excuses. But no, in all honesty, I just haven't been playing much. Um, off stream, practically not at all. I haven't had a tournament game in, in a couple weeks. Um, but not, not playing online either. So I'm pretty, pretty out of practice. I've got more excuses. Just let me know. <laughs> yeah, you need to let me win. President is playing pretty solidly. I mean, the Steinus is not a bad opening, but again, I think you're taking with the bishop here. <clears throat> the first Banco Gambit game played by Capablanca. I don't remember that. Infinite Flash. I've never been a huge follower of Capablanca. I have the collection of like his best end games, I think. I mean, I appreciate Capablanca, but I'm not, I'm not, I was never like studying his games, you know, um, religiously or something. Many other players I did or have, but Capablanca, not really, not a player who really inspired me that much. President Donald Duck is like stringing these like solid one move moves together, a little like Karpov. Very safe. He's also doing that like, oh, I'm so weak. Pretending like he's gonna roll over and die. Maybe he will. I don't know. I hope so. Trading queens. All right, I have no problem with trading queens. I actually like trading queens. Some people criticize me for liking it too much. Thanks for sharing Infinite Flash Chess. Um, I think of... Steinitz games when I see the structure. I mean, it's very standard. I mean, Steinitz defense games. Capablanca among them, actually. Playing this opening with Black, ironically, and Lasker. But Lasker, Steinitz, successful playing this opening with Black. <clears throat> it is obviously a little bit passive for the second player. G6.
President Donald Duck, both solid and fast. 1738. When are you going to start making bad moves? Didn't he say he was going to let me win? He has yet to make any bad moves. Really. I was looking at g4 originally. Look how solid his position is. Very hard to attack this pawn, this pawn, this pawn. How do I attack those pawns? It's not possible, practically. I can attack the... That I didn't expect. And doubles his pawns. And my knights gotta recalibrate. I don't think I'm gonna win this game. I'm not very optimistic. He's not making any mistakes. Maybe this? Bust the Nimzovichi and blockade on him. Seems really strong. Now, nah, he finally might have made a mistake. <laughs> might have. <clears throat> <coughs> King up ninety five check. I have to take the pawn now. Very good game by Black. Oh, the game is Nizovich versus Capablanca. <laughs> I probably have seen it, but I didn't have time to click the link. Try to reset ourselves. All right, got a free night. Yes, President Donald Duck hanging tough to the end game. Man, not a bad game. Let's get some more challenges out there. We've got an hour and a half yet for the stream, so let's see. Infinite Flash, chessgames.com. Burn the witch. Radiohead reference. Um, what did you call it? When Nimzovich was white, grabbed a pawn on A7. We call it a Banco Gambit. <laughs> that Banco Gambit game. Oh man, this is a pretty bad game. I wonder what time control they were playing. Man, St. Petersburg 1914. I don't really like the way that the Nimzovich conducted that game. I'm not sure about the soundness of grabbing the pawn, but what happened after that wasn't good. 
You think that the Benko Gambit's named after? Let's get some weird games. All right. Um, let's get some challenges out there. My stream is not. Let me refresh. Guys, weird Wednesday, unusual opening stream with Panda and friends. Someone on sound is here. Is my stream working right? I can't get it to fire up. Something with my player? I just can't, I cannot see my own stream now. Actually, this happened earlier. I tried to, uh, maybe it's something with my player. I tried, I tried to watch somebody else's, why? I tried to watch somebody else's stream earlier today and it wouldn't play. What do you guys think that is? Hmm. Report playback issue. Full screen playback. Playback doesn't work. How about that? How about just playback doesn't work? Can I report that? <clears throat> I am not seeing my own stream. I just keep getting, it's like buffering. I mean, as long as you guys can see the stream, I guess that's good. But all I'm getting is buffering <coughs> when I try to watch my own stream. Very strange. Something with a playback on the machine. Okay, James Clark. James Clark left. James Clark, I was about to click on your challenge. There he is. All right. Oh, we promised to see five. So I think this is, this is like a fundamental mistake when you let your center get exchanged off. I mean, the best move is D5. And other than that, you can support it with E3 or C3. Anytime you let that center go, I think the black is is equalizing at minimum. You know, now we gain a we gain a kind of half tempo on the queen. London system versus anything. Yeah, I mean C five is the ultimate move against people who play the London system. It's the best. It's probably the best move against and you know to be an anti London system setup essentially. I'm really risking it with E five here. My d5 square is weak. Need to follow up actively. The middle of the night for Astrobate. Actually, you guys. Someone on sound, are you at home in the USA? Or are you on the road again? On the road again. Just can't wait. I, 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 my cough is better. This is awesome. I can sing Kenny Rogers. For a thousand bits, I'll sing Kenny Rogers. <laughs> I'll start doing like... Requests. But Esserman can't sing Kenny Rogers. Alright. Bishop E3, D5. At home for another 15 minutes. Headed to the airport for the dreaded 6 a.m. flight. I actually hate country music, but the gambler, that's not the gambler, is it? What's that on the road again? It's just called on the road again, right? Um, but Kenny Rogers and those kind of songs are like iconic. You know, even if you hate country music, like you still have to like that. A Willie Nelson is on the road again. Are you serious? Willie Nelson is on the road again? I thought it was Kenny Rogers. God. Shows you my love for 
That's frightening, though. It's almost like blundering Knight H7 check in that other game. It's on the same level, basically. It's the same level of blunder. Mistaking Kenny Rogers for Willie Nelson. Like, all my life, I assumed that song was Kenny Rogers. It wasn't, like, something that I forgot, you know? I just never really thought about it. He probably did a cover, man. I mean... <clears throat> James Clark is losing control of the center. And this largely started as a result of his move, too. You know, when he, he didn't reinforce his D4 par. Not that he hasn't made other mistakes, but I'm just... To prove a point, you know, if you're going to play bishop f4, you got to have some central kind of basis. He lost his center. So first, if you're going to play the London system and you don't like pushing to d5, your only alternative is probably c3 here. The second alternative would be to give up your center with dc and play bishop f4 in, in the interim, if you really like that kind of slav. <coughs> Slav style deployment with the bishop on f4. I mean, it happens in the Slav, the same thing. Like You're playing d5, and then you're going to grab the pawn on c4, and then you're going to play bishop f5 when you have the free time that it takes white to get the pawn back. But very fundamental mistake, what James Clark did, you know, not maintaining his center. John Denver, maybe. Can't believe we're talking about country music on my stream. That's perverse. I only like Johnny Cash. That's about it. I actually have a Johnny Cash CD somewhere. All right, that's mate. Mate is mate. Pre-move. The goat. All right, the goat probably likes country music. I would imagine. That would be his style. All right, let's go on. So, next challenge. At least James Clark was brave enough to challenge. Most of you guys are afraid. Afraid to challenge the master. Mule Skinner took me down. Downtown with knight h7 check. Actually, I just created a study the other day about like my greatest blunders or something. So that's going to be the first one in the list. Thank you, Mule Skinner, for giving the opportunity to to create the first really illustrative classic kind of blunder uh, for my blunder study. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a favorite Johnny Cash song. I just like some of them. Let's go on. It was cool when Johnny Cash did a Nine Inch Nails cover with Trent Reznor, right? That was weird. Shortly before he died. <laughs> that was cool. Clash of genres. Um, all right. I'm going to have to go to the go to the, the well and dig up some victims, it looks like. Create a game. Zombie victims. Quick pairing. No. Lobby. The lobby. Paging bad puppy. Meet me in the lobby in five minutes. Bunny. Bunny chess. There's no casual games at all in the entire list. Did that get modified? Or Maybe I did that. My casual is clicked. No, I overlooked a horrible mating threat in the second game I played today. I just sat there for like a minute and didn't see it hanging over my head like the Sword of Damocles. Blissfully, blissfully ignorant that I was going to get brutalized. You taught me everything I know about blunders, Esther Bait. So where's the casual games here? Casual victim. There's one. 1410. Popo baga baga. Alright, weird openings. This is a little extreme. 
but I'm just having fun with this guy. Five plus three. Ah, oh, he aborted the game. Warning. Warning. Come on, dude. Compliments. Andorra. Five zero. I tried to play knight h3, they got insulted. Alright, we won't go that far. Let's play f4. Hopefully that ends up in the lead chess tactics trainer, yeah. I, I want to see that again and again. It explains why you played knight g5, because I'm sitting there like, Really analyzing knight f7, thinking that's the only threat. I can't believe the second player didn't respond. Dude, they're just frozen in fear. Why are these guys putting out challenges, then, if they're not even going to play? 3-0 is too fast. 10-0 is too, too long. Okay, three bears. This one's just right. Come on. You need the pack, someone on sound. 3 2 casual. Scarcelina. It's a little too fast, but we'll try. Well, I mean, you can see the game after you're done the puzzle, Triumphant. It usually says the name of who played the game. So, what are we going to play? Knight h6. The 3 a.m. defense. I invented this opening. But it's not really good enough to be called a proper opening. Now we transpose to Katarina Leno versus Magnus Carlsen after c6. But I have better than that. I'm going to play c5. I think e5 is a really, really bad move, actually, against knight h6. Does anyone know if any puzzles are from my games? Uh, um, I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't know. Nobody knows. I mean, I never heard anyone say, hey, I saw this game of yours. That was a puzzle. Um, so that's all I know. The older I get, the less I know. Not sure about Queen B6, actually. It's probably playable. This guy doesn't seem too bad. I've also got to remember that this is 3 plus 2. I'm used to playing longer time controls. We're playing 5 plus 3 through 7 plus 3 for the most part. But everybody's afraid. My amazing play today, so. He's just blundering a pawn, which is very standard. Standard against the knight h6. Knight h6 just cows them into total submission. Cows the verb. Is that is that reasonable to say cows them? Did you know a hundred thousand people have looked at your game? My game? I lost the I lost the thread again, triumphant. <clears throat> yeah, it's this is why I play knight h six. That's why I invent openings because people are often put off by. I had a funny story about this though. There was this there's this Mongolian woman young woman who's in men's IM and when she first came to Hungary for training with uh, Tibor Karoy she was rated like 2100 something but her rapid rating was lower she had only played a few rapid tournaments and so although she was around 2400 slow chess her rapid was like 1950 or something and I didn't know who she was and I got paired with her in this tournament 
a rapid tournament here in Budapest. It was round one. And uh, so this, this young woman is like 2,400 fide, you know, regular at the same time and around the time around the same as me. But her pairing, you know, rating was 1950. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'm black. I'm going to play knight h6 on move one <laughs> against this random 1950. And I did and she like crushed me. And I was like told that her real rating was 2400. That's pretty cool, you know. Um, I was happy, you know, to lose like, I don't know, 10 rating points or more because of FIDE's failed rating system. No, knight b5. <coughs> Preemptive. I'm just going to, I'm going to castle. This guy's pretty good. You know, he's fast. There's logic to his play, but... I'm just going to swap out pieces and win. Robinson? Resigns. Rematch. No, no. Thank you. I've got a challenge from Clash Kid. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Weird openings today. Let's try to focus on playing something unusual. Knight h6 is a bit much. The King's Gambit, I don't know. I've been scoring low with that lately. Let's try the center attack. In honor, in honor of someone on sound. Plays like the Danish or whatever. We have to do the Danish. Let's do the center attack. Queen d4. I have a bad score with this. Lost with it in one tournament game. And I don't think my results here are that, that convincing. So normally white plays queen e3. There's also queen d1, queen a4. But let's do the, the stockfish variation. Queen c4. Stockfish likes to put its queens on on these squares for some reason. It's queens. The jester. Jester is a combination of piece that works like a rook and... How is it? It's a rook and a bishop? Or rook and knight? I can't remember. The jester. Knight c4. Queen c4, excuse me. Knight f6. Um, I don't know how this is supposed to work for me. I guess he's threatening to play d5 and equalize. bg5 doesn't look right. bg5 seems wrong. Knight c3 allows bishop b4. I mean, he's threatening d5 to equalize. I mean, I can't do everything. I mean, I can't really ask for more than equality, though. I don't know if I should be afraid of him equalizing or just embrace it and be like Magnus Carlsen. It's okay if you equalize. Um, I'll just <laughs> beat you later. Um... Yeah, I guess I should play like knight c3, bishop b4, bishop d2, castle, castle. It kind of seems like the best. At least I'll get his bishop pair if he trades on on c3. I 
I guess I could play knight e2. Technically. Well, he's threatening d5. Bishop b4, knight e2, d5. I think I have to break the pin. I think I'm playing... What's up, Bob? I think I'm playing the... <laughs> You know, the normal line with my queen on c4 instead of e3. For whatever that's worth. I just wanted to invent something new, you know. Like, I don't think you'll find any queen c4 variations. The slaggy variation. I invented a new opening today. But I've checked it with the engine. It wasn't that bad. I think that queen c4, stockfish thought, was almost as good as the other normal moves. My fear was that he would eventually take advantage of it with bishop e6. <clears throat> What's up, guys? We're streaming for another hour. Thanks for joining me, supporting the stream. We had some bit donations yesterday. Ready for another bit war today. Actually, someone on sound. Generously. Bob says the Bartholomew played queen c4. Well, whoever has the best physique, Bob, that's who it should be named after. Clash Kid here using too much time. Say what? So he's kind of hoping for some like knight takes d5, bishop d2, king d2 sort of gambit. But I'm probably not going to sign in, sign up for that. You know, I don't really want my king on d2. So we'll just take with the pawn. I kind of doubt this for black a little bit. Now what's he do? Take on c3. D takes c6. The best blunders of all time. Now knight takes d5, bishop g7. I would assume that's good for me. So I almost... It has to play queen takes d5, which looks good for white as well, actually. Am I just, like, not up a pawn for nothing here? Take, take, bishop g7, rook g8. Okay, black has some compensation. Bishop h6. <clears throat> but is it enough compensation? I can also just take on f6 with a better endgame. Bishop f6, queen c4, bishop c4, gf6 with advantage to white. Just a small advantage. Someone broke into your house last week? Didn't mention that before, man. Or maybe you did and I didn't mention it. I didn't notice it. I mean, you live in a good neighborhood. So I have to give the A2 pawn back. Have an A2 pawn on the house. They stole your lawnmower? Damn, dude, they must have had some time. Yeah, contractors are the worst. Extremely dubious lot. I know from experience. That industry needs to be better regulated. Keep an eye on those guys. Should be a registry, national registry of 
dubious contractors. He could have played night before last move. So does black really have compensation here? Well, my bishop's paralyzed. There's knight e2. The lazy man's move is a3. I got a hot lawnmower for sale. They're easy to move. Surprised he didn't steal the piano, Bob. <clears throat> Bishop takes c2. Wow. That never crossed my mind. Yeah, I expected this. Luckily, my dark square bishop holds the e3 square, so that's not actually a major issue. It seems like Clash Kid went in for this pawn sacrifice really unnecessarily. I mean, he should have just developed his pieces. Like castles is a normal game. Castles, castles, d6. Guys, tomorrow night is my subscriber stream. I've got a pretty bad situation in personal life wise with my mom being in a hospital in, in pretty bad shape. So I don't know at any moment I could have to like cancel a stream or something. But tentatively, my schedule will go on. The show must go on. Literally. I'm a little bit wondering why I didn't think of this before. Huh. Do we have a problem? I was expecting rook d6. You settled. Settled out of court with rook e6. Should have gone the other way. Maybe rook d6 didn't really threaten anything? I think it was, though. It was threatening this massive knight e3. Mate on D1. No, my mom didn't stop having issues, but she has pneumonia, dude. Um, it's looking really bad, so I don't know if she's going to make it. There's basically nothing that can be done other than leave her in the hospital. And I'm getting like... She was fine, like, a week ago. And started coughing a week a week ago, exactly a week ago. Took her to the doctor Friday. Sunday, she was really bad. Got the ambulance, took her to the hospital Monday morning. and She's not improved um, so far. So... <clears throat> it's... It's probably like the most common cause of death for people who have like Alzheimer's is just like straight up pneumonia. But maybe that's true for all people over 85. Well, then again, most people die of like heart conditions, but um, yeah. Anyway, so there's nothing I can really do. We visit her in the hospital, see what's up. And uh, luckily it's really close to where I live, so. When I was in Massachusetts, I had to like drive 45 minutes to the hospital every day, but now I can just like walk 10 minutes to the hospital. So it's a little more convenient. Thanks for the, the wishes, Alborg. Um, she has Alzheimer's and she's been really out of it anyway. So 
it's been a struggle for a long time. <clears throat> As anybody who's watched my stream knows, the last six months has been really difficult. I've been talking about it constantly. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I just want her to be at peace. You know, she's suffering. It's it's like not worth living. So I don't know. Maybe she can recover though. It's really like not clear. Um, like she had a kidney infection in 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 like January, and she was able to recover from that. Um, pneumonia, I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe she can recover. It's, it's really, it's a little tougher though. Cause she was like a lifetime smoker. She probably has significant like emphysema and stuff. Um, you know, I'd imagine the, uh, the pneumonia is worse than like a run of the mill kidney infection. Okay, dude, you're starting to make me. You're starting to make me angry. How do I get out of this? <coughs> I'm not going to agree a draw here. It reminds me of the game I had with Arsenal fan like last week. Same kind of thing. Strong bishop pawn down. Wow, that's, that's, that's crazy. He's actually almost holding this. Dominated minor piece. I guess I could go to the rook end game with a better structure. That seems like a draw, though. Objectively. You could try to get to a minor piece end game. Rook d4 is no good, man. He's going to get down on the 8th the and then rook g1. I can't lose my g2 pawn. I need a better suggestion. I could play ninety four here. Should I have played c3 first? Um, I'm not sure. From up a pawn to down a pawn. Covered the gamut here. It's quality, not quantity. Quality is job one. Alright, we kept the healthy, the healthy sort of islands together. I thought he could have tried like h3, maybe, right about now. Try to break up my structure.
Let's see, though. I was terrified of H5, H4 at that point. <clears throat> Better not lose this game. All right. Oms. Oh, Oms is tough. No coffee. Vienna. Vienna coffee. Clash Kid is from, is from Austria. Good, good coffee place. Um, okay, we're playing Alms. Let's do um. <laughs> Slam this guy. He's he's like the the solid guy, in the stream. He's easy, easy to kill. He's drawn me like the last five games. Simul, Blitz. Simul. What was this? Blitz. He's holding up in Blitz too. Okay, one was a kind of quick draw in our Blitz tournament yesterday. Um, what do we do for weird openings? The Latvian I have to play with black. Yeah, you should play the Latvian. Just blast him. But he knows like mainline stuff really well. I, I just prevented the Latvian. Now F5, you should play that. Too late. No Latvian now. Um, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna make something up. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to see that though. Thank you, Oms, for playing something I like to play against. Nimzovic defense deferred of sorts. Um, I like F4. It's not really the main line. Actually, the main line is, is like knight f3 or something. But I don't know why, because I think this is just better. I've had a number of games on the stream, and one really easy tournament game. I think you can also play knight back to c6, kind of like a Budapest gambit. It reminds me of that a little bit. The, the f4 variation of the Budapest gambit, the e4, f4, Budapest. Obviously, in that case, my C pawn would be on C4, though. So white has a lot more weaknesses in that kind of situation. He knows this? I think this is actually the recommended move by theory. I had a game with that guy, 10-year-old from Azerbaijan who plays in the tournaments I do on Tuesdays. I think we actually had a game in this position, but not this exact position. Maybe I'm wrong though. I mean, where's he supposed to put this bishop? Would bishop a5 change anything? I had this this a game this a game without c3 I've told before on the stream Grand Knight thank you um Jared Bryan played bishop c5 against me <laughs> and then then he played king f8 <laughs> there was a good practical try you know to play king f8 so I don't know. For a moment, I thought it's normal to play bishop b4 check, but maybe he can do it with the knight on c6. So knight c6, bishop c4, um, you know, bishop b4 check, c3, bishop a5. That must have been the other game that I played, where the bishop's actually protected by the knight on c6. Here, it's just not protected. It's the same as my game with Jared Bryan. So 10-year-old must have gone back to c6. And that's how he could afford to play the bishop e4 check, bishop, bishop a5, bishop to b6. And we're probably winning. But to be fair to Alms, he's a good sport. He's playing uh, 
an opening that's not in his normal repertoire, which is kind of the theme of the day. Um, you guys are not obliged to do that, but it's fun. He said he did play this a lot in the past. His former life. My previous life. I was a Nimzovich player. Well, you have the right idea. Just the knights on the wrong square. It's a scotch, a commonly used scotch maneuver, bishop b4 check. I never really understood it. To be quite frank. But I guess there might be some benefit. My knight doesn't have the c3 square here. I'm looking at queen c4 again. It might actually be a good move. I felt that queen d4 would in many cases allow him to play c5. But now I'm going to have my own issues as well. But you got to remember his king is on f8. If it wasn't for that, he would be golden. <clears throat> what is debatable? He resigned? Well, this seems like weird. I definitely, I wouldn't resign. You've got queen e7 here. And then I play knight on bd2, you have d5 right away. What's going on? I'm not sure why he resigned. I don't know that I would have seen castles. If I don't find castles, I don't think I'm even better. Now, maybe queen e7 is not his best move. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think Am should resign. All right. This is like the stockfish says that black is worse by two, but that's if white plays perfectly. This this game could totally shift like by one or two bad moves. So I do agree. You know, it's very kind of of Alms to to let other people play, but I disagree with his decision to resign. Um, I think that it's just ridiculously premature. Okay, Morales. Um, I mean, I only had one good move, and I'm not sure I would have castled. You know, honestly, I probably would. It would have been equal after like one more move, <laughs> from the engine standpoint. All right, let's try d4. Morales likes to play the Budapest Gambit. Life is hard enough, so d4 c5. We played this earlier, and, um, well, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't make Morales play the, the Mora Gambit. Does Antonio play the Sicilian? He usually plays the French. Now he can play e6. I guess if you play the French, you play e6. That's fine. If he plays Sicilian, then he's happy. We're in the Sicilian realm. That's all right. We can still find something interesting. It doesn't have to be a main line. So what can we do against the old G6 Accelerated Dragon, our own, one of our own favorite openings? 
Knight takes okay. c6 is a bad move. This is bad because we don't have that many options here. I wanted to play something unusual, but now what am I going to do? Ninety two. It didn't phase him. We can transpose to a Fianchetto system. But how inaccurate is my move order? Not really clear. Now g3 castles bishop g2 is like a standard position. So is there anything else I can try? Knight f4. Moving the knight again. <laughs> b3 not a good move. Um, Got to get the pieces developed here. I got four. Something totally weird. Don't try this at home. Clash Kid, thanks. Take care of yourself. Thanks for joining our stream today. We're going to be back with subscriber stream on Thursday. So 6.30 tomorrow night, if all goes well. Anybody else have a clue why I can't, why my my um, Twitch stream is just buffering when I try to view it, but it could be randomly when it was working fine like yesterday. Do you think I have to up, update some kind of software? It's a very new laptop. Queen A5. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, things are getting weird around here. Are you threatening my, my pawn, my friend? He's threatening his pawn. I get it. So knight ninety three, ninety three queen e six. This is actually kind of a standard idea. It's a draw by repetition. So now we have a problem. It's looking like d five is a move. Okay, F3. How bad is it? Almost seems forced. If I don't want to just... Knight D3, Queen E6, Knight C5. Queen E5, Knight D3, Queen E6, Knight C5. If I want to try to win, seems like I have to practically play this. This is a risky maneuver by Black, you know. He could have just played any host of moves um, and been at least equal with any sort of normal move. Although I don't know if I would have chosen to play Queen A5 in the first place. It's an interesting play though.
Now what? Bishop c4. All right, I've got to move, so got to do something. It's got a lot of time, three minutes to one. Rating dropping like a rock. <laughs> I lost 40 rating points due to forfeit yesterday. I'm already way below where I should be. Dragon B and Frush just re-challenged to 5 plus 3. He was challenging rated. So yeah, any range between 5 plus 3 and 7 plus 3 is cool. Dragon B donated to support the stream after Sunday's simul. As I mentioned yesterday, thanks to him for the generous donation to support the stream. Dragon, I should say. But he's actually Dragon, so that's interesting. If he's Dragon or Dragon? Dragon or Dragon? All right, <clears throat> Bishop C4. My friend Grandmaster Kosic is, is a dragon too. It's a cool name. Probably has like a really sort of old historical significance. A6, all right. I'm wasting time. Seems like I'm wasting time. Where does my king want to go? B5 is coming anyway. B5, B4. Very annoying. Black is pretty good here. We're clinging to the strong point on E4. Um, so B4, Knight A4, I guess, is okay for me. I don't have to worry about that. I guess we just castle kingside. I'm about to lose on time. This is totally lame for white, though. I just wanted to experiment with something new, but it, it's been very well played by Morales, who's actually supposed to be... I thought he was supposed to be a French defense player. He's taken to the accelerated dragon really well. This is the dragon queen. It's a very strong diagonal. I'm kind of hoping that the d5 square would would at least offset some of his initiative. But he can always just play e6 pretty much any time he wants. I was kind of expecting that before. But some people who play the dragon don't like to play e6. They feel like it weakens the dark squares. I don't think it's very relevant here, though. Okay, this was a weird move. He sort of chickened out. I may be in serious trouble though. No, 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 no. Hard to choose a rook there. Hmm, he could double my pawns now, bishop c3. Again, a move that not everybody like loves. Those two bishops are nice. <laughs> Maybe c4. I guess he's just going to play e6. Hmm. Damn it, that's a good move. My knight is in limbo. On b6. I guess it's not that bad. It's well protected by the bishop. 
complicated position, to say the least. It's hard to say who's better here. Black's just better, maybe. A really nice central pawn mass. This pawn is cramping me on c4. Good king ought to be worth something. <clears throat> I don't think I have enough here. Losing the initiative. losing a pawn now. Wow. I was losing. Oh my god. I thought I was better, but then. Not here, way back. I thought I was better, but then I was worse. I think the advantage shifted uh, many times. And it was weird. I had a huge edge after Queen h5, f4, I thought. 
where I move 16 at this point. But maybe, maybe I overestimated my position. Yeah, I guess, I guess I overestimated my position a little bit here. And I played too slowly, so. You could have also taken on c3. It wasn't a bad game. The end game may have been bad, yeah. I mean, some points of the end game. But, it, you know, I'm not sure anybody was ever winning. This was stupid to lose a pawn here. We, we shifted advantages a couple times there. Now you're, you're good again. I thought. But. What did I do? And I couldn't decide. So this this is where I started to lose it. And then this. I could have played f5 here. I thought about this. That's probably the best way to try to bail out. Alright, good game, Rouse. So, Dragon and, uh, and Frost. These will probably be the last two games for today, guys. So, I don't um, think anybody else should challenge. I've got to leave in, like, maximum 30 minutes. Alright, playing mostly e4. Um, weird openings is the theme for today. So, I try to play... Try to play systems that I don't normally play. Sometimes I do this A3 system. Bad endgame for you, bad endgame for both of us. I think we both... The advantage changed hands like three three times at least in that endgame, which definitely really shouldn't happen. G6 is the best move. This is concretely the best move against A3. I would play that myself. <clears throat> All right. Well, now I guess what I try to do would be transposed to a kind of closed closed setup as if I were playing like black against the English something like that probably not that good but not that bad e6 looks like a good a good move I'm not sure if he plays d5 too early, he might have problems with the e-file, so that seems correct. I'm just going to bring this back to a2 and play. Looks like, objectively, black's doing the best setup you can do. <clears throat> I think the flexible e6, d5... You don't have to play d5, but usually you should probably play it at some point. I would more often be playing black side of this position than white. So, knight c3. Sometimes you see like bishop takes c3, but I don't think he's... He can't do that here. His dark square bishop is too important. Not not an inspiring system for white though. It should be objectively fine. Black should be equal. I find it hard to play these type of structures for black, though. <coughs> With a French structure, um, that's kind of not something I would normally set up if I were playing the Sicilian. Bishop d2. Now he wants to play b5, which is pretty normal. Maybe I should take on d5 and play d4. If I take on d5, he takes with a pawn. I've given up my center to try to really target d5. It's a risky decision, actually. But it gives me some freedom of movement for my pieces, like I can use the rook on the e-file. But theoretically, this is a mistake. Theoretically, giving up your strong point, it's like the classical opening. Uh, I'm making a concession when I trade off my strong point on e4 to try to have some freedom of movement. It's kind of like you're playing the King's Indian 
and you trade off your e5 pawn on d4 so that your bishop has freedom of movement, your your um, your rook has freedom of movement. But in exchange for that, I'm letting him free um, this bishop on c8. If he takes with the pawn, he remains with a strong pawn that I don't have in the center, for example. Though he will have to face pressure against that pawn, which is kind of irritating. Um, I'm a little concerned about bishop g4. Maybe, maybe not a threat right away, but it will be a threat soon. Perhaps bishop g5 here. Threatening to win a pawn. Provoking weaknesses and then come back. I mean, bishop f4 I found not always so so good. King h8, nice. Getting off the diagonal. So eventually bishop g4, knight c6, knight d4 will become a threat. So I probably will have to play h3 at some point very soon. And then I think the queen side, rook b1, prophylactic. That could be a problem too. Hmm. If I play d4, he kills my bishop with c4, so that's not a good thing. Can I sacrifice in exchange with like rook takes knight? Time to start thinking about it at least. He's allowing for defense. <laughs> Acerbate's favorite maneuver. The rook on a7. Maybe I should transfer my knight over, but then let's see, knight e2. Kind of a standard idea actually. Am I gonna regret allowing bishop g4 here? I don't think it's a threat yet. And I've got this. Black can play g5. That's one of the best um, ideas black can use defensively oftentimes it looks strange but may actually be quite good so here he would play g5 knight g3 i have h5 for my knight so we're going to try it get my knight to h5 i'm not sure i mean this this piece is is kind of bad you know now it's blocked by the pawn on f6 Guys, this is the next to last game. I've got one more challenge with Frucht, a new opponent. If he gives up his white square bishop, he's going to have problems with the white squares. So I'm not sure that this is really a good defense. I've been in this sort of situation for black, and I always kind of get lost. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. It just feels like this bishop has a lot of potential, the rook. The white pieces are just waiting for black to like overextend himself. <clears throat> Thanks for watching, guys. I hope the stream was instructive. And we're going to be back on Sunday, Sunday, Thursday night with the subscriber stream where I encourage you to submit games. If you are a subscriber to my stream, I appreciate it. Um, please do subscribe. I made a gift sub today for Triumphant from Bob, which I appreciate. Um, there goes the white squares. I don't know if he has justification for this, but he's going to really miss that white square bishop because he has many pawns on dark squares. His other bishop is kind of pawn-like on g7. He has this controlled, true enough, but that's not clear if that's enough to solve his problems or not. He's got a lot of pawn moves. He's moved all but this pawn. And it's all fun and games for like Korchnoi. <laughs> but for a mere mortal, um, oftentimes not so easy. So I don't know, is knight d4 really a threat? Maybe not. Maybe I'm, I'm defending against the wrong threat here, essentially. Maybe he's not threatening anything. Should implant, implant this knight here. Because I don't really have any threats myself. Like, taking his bad bishop in itself is not 
that, that big a deal. He's got this covered. If I played c3, he has 95. I could have just waited. You know, sometimes the threat is stronger than the execution, so maybe this is a mistake. Um, maybe I should, but what can I do? I can't play rookie two. I can't double. So there's no really good way to build my position that I can see. Knight e5. Mm -hmm. The other knight could turn around and come over here. So. Bishop. I don't really have a threat here. I guess I do. I'm threatening knight g7 and bishop g5, winning a pawn. But this is a key defender. All right. Wow, I just missed this move entirely. <clears throat> Looks like I might be forced to sacrifice material. So if you play knight to d4 there, it looks like I'm obliged to play rook takes e5, pawn e5, knight g7, king g7, queen e5 check, when I don't think I even have enough compensation. I mean, c4 is a good move strategically. I'm going to have better here. F4. He's got a check on b6 that I didn't even check out. His knights are pretty scary, man. Killing my king side. Oh, man. Oh, man. He said, oh, man. This is very dangerous. Understatement of the year. He has queen b6 check. King h1, queen f2, which is winning. Um, so I have to play like queen b6 check. Queen b6 check, king f1. And then he could just leave his knight on e5 because the f file is deadly. So I think that black's close to winning there. In fact. He was very close to winning. Now it's unclear. No, it's strategically well played by black, playing against my bishop on a2. His knights are stronger than the bishops. Knight g5. Okay, the knight g5 doesn't do anything yet, right now. It's a serious problem for me, this, this bishop on a2. I really like my game with arms.
This is a good move to give my king h2 and stop his knight from coming in d4 directly. <clears throat> but I don't know who's better here. Maybe I'm better, but this bishop is a big problem. Basically playing like down a piece. And getting it back in the game with bishop e1 is not easy to do. <laughs> That's interesting, given what we just talked about. Wow. So c3. An unfortunate pin. The bishop got back in the game. I think the black was better throughout a good chunk of this game, most of the game. But maybe I'm being pessimistic, I'm not sure. Thanks, Dragon. Um, again, you know, I don't know how to evaluate. I think he did have a win at that one point. I mean, probably here. I missed knight f5, queen h2. This is strong. And then knight g7 here. So f4, queen b6 check. This is the key position. I just didn't see queen f2. It's just... Maybe there's... I thought about sacking my queen. I can sack my queen for two pieces. I don't know if it's enough. King h1, queen f2. Um, pawn takes e5. Knight g3 check. This is not enough, though. I was looking at this. And this bishop is still buried, so forget about that. That's not a defense. So I have to play king f1, but here I was basically afraid you just sacrifice your knight on e5. Yeah, and I'm right. Like, this is not a threat, because I'll get crucified down the f file. So you can just take this pawn. Black is more or less just clearly better. All right, good game. That was well played for a long time by black. We lost our last challenge. <sighs> yeah, I haven't been playing the Blumenfeld, but most people don't allow it, Morphe lives. Um, that's the problem with that opening. It's like, you're lucky if you could play it in one in 10 games. They have to play d4, they have to play knight f3, then they have to like allow the like gambit variations themselves. So it, it's not that easy to get that opening. Um, I have time for one last five minute game if somebody wants to challenge me. Carlos the Careless, casual 4.0, chess 960, all right. This isn't the theme for today. Delacorta, thanks for the donation. Carlos the Careless. <laughs> Normally I don't play people who have new accounts, but he's got enough games. Okay, so just for fun, we'll play a Chess 960. Um, I haven't played Chess 960 in ages, actually, in in a stream game. It's the last one for today. Be symmetrical. It's easy to find those moves. Then the question is, what do we do now? I mean, the bishops are, of course, great, you know. In such a position. Knight's not so easy to get into the game. I think he was a little hesitant there with g3. I'm not really sure what my plan is. This is a fast time control. Hmm. What's the plan? There is no plan. He's opening it up. That's my king, man. I just got to remember that's my king on f8. 
Try to keep it solid. He's 1286. Almost mate. Sack your queen. Queen takes c5. Carlos the careless. He's got no chess 960. He does. Six games. He's 1286. Queen c5. <laughs> um, what does that like win a pawn? If I take rook takes 98, rook takes c8. That's unclear. e3. All right. The king's just chilling here in the center of the board. Wow. He's an aggressive dude. Does this work? He gets a bishop and a rook and a queen and I get a rook. What am I doing? I'm taking with the pawn? I have 98. I have to get this in my mind that I have 98. Wow. Um, he's kind of scary. I guess we'll just put our king there. <laughs> Actually, he's not threatening anything now. Bit of a queen problem. What's his rating? 1400? 1500 rapid? Careless perhaps, but not bad. I'm kind of scared, dude. Reminds me of playing a blue-eyed albino yesterday. There's a very, very strong chance I'm going to lose this game. Typically, I don't like to play unrated players for a reason. I guess I won't be castling here. It seems awfully strong for 1400 Blitz player. Perfect peace coordination. Hmm. Maybe I can hang on somehow. So in insanely fast. <laughs> he moves almost instantly. He has perfect coordination of the pieces. He's supposed to be 1400. But he's 1900 in correspondence. Definitely not a player you want to play a lot of rated games against. His speed of play seems really, really fast for someone who's supposed to be 1400. Anyway, it's all for entertainment anyway. We're going to be back tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. with our subscriber stream. This is a perfect move. King G2. Maybe we could get a threat for once. I haven't been able to move my queen like the entire game. That's the thing I find hardest about chess 960. Inability to develop queen in general. It's very awkward.
Let's try for blockade. Do I have some lag going on? Oh, it's sudden death. Oh, I just resigned. Okay. I didn't know it was it was sudden death. Hmm. I didn't know it was sudden death. I thought it was increment. <laughs> so I never play increment. I mean, I always play increment. Carlos seems a little too strong. He's still slightly better. Yeah. Unicorn 99. Um, all right, might as well play one more game. Against a real opponent. I was th I was thinking, I, I mean, I'm used to playing increments, so I let myself cut down to one second. But obviously, I can't. <laughs> I can't make it. Somebody should have warned me. You're playing increment, dude. You're playing without increment. Um, I'm a little dependent on the increment. You know, if I know that I'm not playing increment, but he was too strong. I mean, there's something suspicious about that guy. There's no more games. I gotta go. Um... Very suspiciously strong player. I would I wouldn't recommend playing him any rated games. Alright. <clears throat> but you get those dubious guys here in online chess. That was a really strong game. Um Unicorn 99, so this is theory. Thanks guys for supporting the stream, for subscribing, donations. Um what's this about? This is normal, right? It gets book. A3. Hmm. Stronger than normal. They're supposed to play knight c3. That's the main line. As far as I knew. So he has like psychic powers. I don't know who this player is. They don't talk in my stream at all. It's all very secretive. But they seem enormously strong. They beat me two out of the last three. A lot of players like that these days. A3 followed by H4. I don't want to lose too many more games to this guy. I'm not going to be happy about it. Maybe I could sack a pawn with like b5. Just random, randomly sack a pawn for some sort of counterplay. a3 and h4 having used no time at all. I think some people also use like the, the opening explorer when they're not supposed to. Obviously you're not supposed to use the Lee Chess opening explorer to help you during the game, but I suspect a lot of people do. And uh, that's that's really putting me off sometimes. I'm almost lost already. He's used nine seconds for the entire game. It's a little like my game with Acerbate. Not quite as bad, but it's close. How can you play a3 and h4 and just leave your king in the center and instantly have a winning position? That doesn't seem fair, you know? In the beginning, I was beating him, but at the end, it started to be kind of tougher. He just like instantly makes moves using no time at all. I'm just not really in the mood for this. 
I feel like just resigning here. The guy's just too good. I mean, maybe my position, I mean, how can you play an international master and crush them using 20 seconds on the clock? You know, like, who are you? He started to play really well in the last couple of games. Before that, he seemed very strong, but somehow I managed to win games. Now he's just winning here. I don't know why he's stalling on this move. Like the winning move is the only move he's thought about so far. Should I play bishop takes h7 right away? Or should I think about it, you know, a little bit longer? I won't play it. I won't play the winning move. He played all of his other moves in like two seconds. And now he has like bishop takes h7 check. And probably that wins, wins material. But he doesn't play it, you know. It's kind of weird. Interesting to analyze this game afterwards. How long has this account been around? Let's see. Oh, that's suspicious there. He's 2602 in in training games. What's that about, dude? You like cheat on your puzzles? He's 2602 in training. Cheats on his puzzle. Puzzle solutions. <laughs> oh, dude, that's gross. Okay. Who would cheat on their puzzle answers? <laughs> I don't think I could get over like 2450 in puzzles. Cheating on puzzles. You don't get any Christmas presents if you do that. <laughs> he's a puzzle cheater. All right, finally he's going to win the pawn now. He still doesn't want to win the pawn. Hmm. Elimin eliminate all counterplay first. Of course. This isn't a puzzle, though. I'm a human being. How's my rook end game? Very hard to hold, probably. <clears throat> Glad I saw that move coming. <coughs> It's a good thing he doesn't have rook takes b7, queen g2. <coughs> Highly accurate move. Queen h5 check. I'm a human being, Mr. Bean. Queen f5 check, takes, takes. Queen f6. 
I don't know. I'm probably going to lose. The guy's too good. I could have played like rook f7, but that was exceedingly passive. I guess we just try to hold the draw if I can. It was entertaining, this, whatever it was. I don't want to take him on in a puzzle solving competition. 2600 puzzle master. All right, guys, tomorrow will be my subscriber stream, 6.30 PM. You can submit games to my, if you're a subscriber, you can submit games to my account Sparkle Horse here on the chess. Of course, Master has this. He's got it all worked out. Just like humiliating, you know? E2 wins. E2 wins? Looks like he messed this up. It's very strange. He was easily better. I mean, I thought I was just lost, actually. I guess he can't really lose if he can perpetual me. I feel like he's trolling me or something. Now he just reverts back to the draw whenever he wants. <laughs> All of it was just like trolling me. Yeah, whatever, dude. All right, guys, I got to go. That was entertaining. The last couple games were really entertaining. I will see you on Thursday night. Um, subscriber stream. You guys who are subscribers are welcome to submit games to my messages here on Sparkle Horse on Lee Chess. Thanks, everybody, for playing and for hanging out with me and um, for subscribing. So we'll see you then. Take care. Thanks for watching and thanks for playing.
Bye bye, guys. Bye bye. Don't do that again.